All right, Kamal, we're out at your farm, Sankofa, yep. and uh, so happy to be here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, tell us a little bit about like you and the farm and all that kind of stuff. All right, so just to start with the origin, Sankofa is a uh, West African term that means to remember your African ancestry as you move forward in life. So when I was uh, coming through, um, working on my, finishing up my graduate um, program, working on my master's, I found out about this issue called food deserts. And at that time, most of my experience was working with animals. And I was very experienced in, uh, in animal, animal productions and working with the chickens and, and the uh, swine at North Carolina A&T. And once I came across the issue of food deserts, I was inspired to um, look into starting a farm so I could help get produce and also um, introduce African Americans to concepts and practices in agriculture. All right, so very cool background. Tell us a little about the farm here and what you guys are up to. All right, so now I'm at the farm. I always start with the bees because the bees are my favorite. It's the thing that clicks for me the best. We have um, a total of 40 beehives, 38 on site, and two at my house. Well, no, we have 42, and then two in um, at a um, two that are at a location in Eflin for people who are in our Lisa High program. And then we also have two caterpillar tunnels where we're planning on getting produce in and getting our fall um, our fall products ready to go. All right, so we'll get into the bees a little bit later. Um, how long has this farm been here? Uh, this is our fourth year farming, and um, it's been a, a, a long journey. We were originally denied the property, but we had to appeal it, and we ended up getting the property. And last year, around this time, we got our well. So we've just now been able to get the infrastructure to produce uh, food for people. Awesome. So we're in Cedar Grove, which is a pretty rural area. Uh, where's your where's your market? Where are you selling to? So right now our market is in Durham and we're selling through CSAs and we're also in the process of starting our own CSA and getting that going. So we are doing a lot of CSAs and we also have a component of our, of our um, sales where we do um, produce drop-offs where people we will schedule a location and we'll let people in the community know and they can meet us there that's outside of our CSA. So those are the places that we get our food out at right now. All right, so you guys invested in quite a bit of tunnels, which is awesome. Um, so you guys got, what, four 100-foot tunnels here? Yes, right now we have four 14 by 100-foot tunnels. The first two that we have, um, we've had for a year. And then we just recently built two more tunnels last week. Okay, and these are these two behind us? Oh, uh, yes, these are the two behind us. They look a whole lot newer and cleaner. So. Okay, well, they look great. You guys got the shade cloth. Looks like you got beds almost ready to plant here. Yep. And you guys are putting some fall crops in here? Yeah, we're going to get some fall crops. Right now we're looking at lettuces. Um, cabbage, arugula, kale mix, and, the, and they'll literally be planted by the time you all see the video. So I hope that um, you all are able to see our progression once you tune in. All right, let's go take a look around. All right, let's go. So we're kind of out in the open area here, really at the center of your farm, mm -hmm. but you're kind of in transition. You're going to move stuff around and get some more infrastructure. Yeah, so actually in this location here, we're going to be putting a refrigeration unit and also our seedling house. And then to the, um, on the, in this field over here where our the two cowpillar tones you were just looking at, we're actually going to put, um, move our cowpillar, two of our older cowpillar tunnels, and put them on either side of our um, of the of our newly built cowpillar tunnels. All right, so this will sort of be the center, yep, sort gonna, of the hub of the farm here. Yeah, this is going to be like the the brain of the farm. It's going to be the this area right here. We're moving everything around to be more efficient. All right, so this is a sort of back area. You guys are doing some long-term crops. I see like squash and okra and peppers and stuff. So in this field, we have um, jalapeno peppers, we have squash, and we also have okra. And then to the far left in this field, we have uh, some sweet potatoes that, that are growing. This is an area that we've been working on um, ever since we've gotten the farm. And this is the first year it's had irrigation. But this is really um, a unit that's going, an area that's going to be transitioning as well as we move forward and, and create a, an, an, another model and structure, put another structure around the farm. Okay, and so as you guys are building up the farm, what are some longer term goals you have? So the, the long term goal for San Colf is for us to have an education center out here that will introduce African American students to STEM through the exposure to agriculture. That's the long term goal. So it's just been really interesting seeing how our students have gravitated toward the work because one, they become more community centered and secondly, they're learning. So now the skills that they pick up here at the farm, they're able to go out and, and apply them to different areas of their life. So like one student we have, he's been out here 
since seventh grade, so he's been out at the farm since it's been nothing but trees. He now started his own uh, commerce business. So just being able to be in a space where he can pick up principles, he can see the shortcomings of a business because he's been out here with us. He can see the, um, the high points in the business, like things that we've done very great. Now he can take those things and apply them to his own business model and structure. All right, let's talk about the academic stuff a little bit. You, uh, a lot of these students you're referring to, you used to be their teacher. Yes, so I uh, taught at Lowe's Grove Middle School in Durham, North Carolina for uh, two years. And after my first two years at that school, I transitioned to another school called Neal Middle School. I um, taught biotech at the first school and then taught environmental science at the second school. And while I introduced the students to concepts in the field, the students would gravitate and um, ask me about outside learning opportunities. So I had the farm at this time. I eventually invited the students out to the farm. So all the students that I've work with except for three I was all um, I was the teacher at some point as well okay and now you're um, working towards your doctorate yes yeah, so, talk a little bit about that so now I'm, um, I'm currently at North Carolina State working on my doctorate in agricultural extension education and my whole goal with my doctorate is um, to give me the, the background and more experience on how to run a school so I'm doing a lot of research now on the learning styles of African-American students and how I can develop tools to get them interested in agriculture okay and then your specialty is with bees yes my, my specialty for sure is with bees i um one of the students ironically uh, three years ago asked could we get bees on the farm and at first i was extremely scared but once we got uh exposed to um an apiary we were brought out for an apiary tour in durham and we started to um, interact with bees more. We all got certified. Me and four students are certified beekeepers. The bees are something that, like, that's like the thing that I love to do at the farm. I love everything, but the bees are what I love the most to do at the farm. And our whole goal with the bees is to expose populations that normally wouldn't have access to the education to get them interested and exposed to bees, but also just to show the um, the benefits of pollinators and, and habitats. Okay, so bees were kind of like your gateway drug into agriculture. Yeah, be, be, bees are definitely like the thing that, like once I found out that we could do, that's where my mind was like, how can we get more bees? So that's how it ended up with 42 beehives. All right, let's go check out some of the beehives. All right, let's go look at the bees. All right, so you got 37 hives? Yeah, we have 37 hives here at San I like Coleman. how you didn't know. Yeah, I lose track of the number of bees we have like literally every time. Earlier I said 42, but now I think it's 40. Okay. So I might be off too. So either way, either way, it's forty something beehives, and being a part of our local beekeeping chapter, we have an opportunity to catch swarms, and literally all of these bees have been caught. So I've gone out, got a swarm call. If there are bees in a tree or bees on a tire somewhere, or bees in a house, and I go catch them, and then I relocate them and rehome them at Sankofa. Or what happens? they'll swarm here at the farm and then I'll catch them and then reincorporate them back into our system. So I've just really grown to have a passion and just love bees. Okay. And so in terms of the farm though, um, are you guys selling honey? Yes, we do sell quantities of honey. This is our second year. Well, going our third year beekeeping, but most of these hives are a year or two old. You typically start getting honey around your second and third year. We got a little bit of honey off of one of our colonies this year, but we're not expecting a lot of honey until next year. We'll, 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 where we'll turn a lot of these hives into production hives. Okay, and a lot of this stuff is based on, you know, you guys do a lot of education. Yes. And bringing people to the farm and learning about bees and stuff. Yep, yeah, we do a lot of agro-tourism here. So we have a program through Airbnb called Bees in a Trap. And it's a program that's um, is for people who are just interested in beekeeping. And we come through, they suit up, and they learn how to inspect a beehive. TRAP is an acronym for Teaching Responsible Apiary Practices. We also do an Airbnb online called Honey at Home Basics of Beekeeping, where people get a virtual tour of a beehive and they get to go over basic practices. And then we have the students that come out. We go take. We have an observation hive. We go speak to uh, children. Um, and expose them to bees. So we did a lot of agro-tourism here at Sankofa. So what were some of the motivations behind the, uh, the educational component of Sankofa? So the whole motivation behind starting Sankofa stemmed from just seeing the opportunities that existed within agriculture that can help vulnerable populations. So I would even say that I'm from a vulnerable population and just the things that I've seen in agriculture as far as the skills, the transferable life skills, the um, introduction in the community to new groups of people like those are the things that i i all value and see 
with agriculture and then incorporating the youth, it's just really more so them being able to have a skill set that can help their communities. Because we look at a lot of the issues um, that exist in our communities, food deserts is one. There's an economic component to it, and there's also a policy component to it. And I think agriculture is a field that touches on both. And if a student or a person who is affected by these, um, these food deserts or is affected by food insecurity picks up this skill and, and gets this knowledge base, they can do a lot of change and, and impact a lot of change in their communities. So how do you see that happening or what do you hope happens sort of even just in our area around here? So I hope that people begin to see that African American boys can do the work that there's, there's a, a stigma on them that they, they either have to rap or go to the league, like go into entertainment or play sports. But when they come into agriculture, you see their minds start to, you, start, you see their wheels start to churn. I think that's the correct term. You see them start to problem solve. You see them start to have hope. You see them begin to um, have the passion and become community centered. You see all these different things come out of this young, this young man that people say didn't exist. So them being a vessel of change, that's the thing that I want to come most out of introducing them to agriculture. And also, we talked about this before, but the um, introduction of different kinds of foods and diets and sort of changing their approach with that too. So one of our students, I just use him as, as, as the uh, example. Sometimes when we're, I'm not proud of it, but sometimes when we're leaving the farm, we might stop real quick and get some fast food or something, just so I, I don't want to have him out all day and then not not give them anything to refuel themselves in any sense. So even though fast food is not the best for that, but I think you'll get what I'm saying. Um, I just, uh, one of the students just said, you know what, Mr. Bell, I don't want to eat fast food anymore. I want to eat healthy. He was, I want to, I want to have access to healthy food and I want to grow, I want a salad. But just seeing his perspective change because a couple years ago, he was like, I don't want to grow anything on the farm. It was just like a joke, but he was, I don't want to grow anything on the farm unless we um, were producing hot dogs and hamburgers. So to hear him now, three years later, say he wants a salad and he's starting to say, I want to get in shape and I want to grow things at the farm I can take home with me. That's really special now that we have the infrastructure to actually do that for him. And they go back and they influence their family's diets too. So now that he's eating better, He's gonna be asking, like the other day, he asked his grandma, like, hey, can you get um, leafy greens from the store? Can you get salads from the store? And then she even went and made a Facebook post saying, my grandson is starting a diet. I'm getting ready to start mine too. So that's what we wanna see out of our program. That's amazing. Uh, so how can people follow along with what you're doing? So um, on Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, you can support and follow, uh, follow us at Sankofa Farms on the shirt. Right here, hope you can see it, Sankofa Farms. And you can reach out, like I'm very, very responsive on DM. I'm responsive on um, Facebook, anything. Just reach out to me, I will get back to you. So I just appreciate you all listening and I hope we can um, continue to uh, change something. All right, so I'll leave links down below for all that stuff, like usual. And uh, thanks so much for having me out today. I can't wait to uh, collaborate more. And yeah. uh, I know we, we're hopefully gonna do some cool stuff together. Oh, yeah, we, we are. Next time y'all see us, it's gonna be something real cool. All right, awesome. Thanks, Mal. Uh, no problem, thank you. All right, so I see a lot of hives here. Yeah, yeah. Let me see how many hives. One, two, you don't even know. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, five, six. Sorry. Three, two, three, three, four, five, six, thirty-seven. Okay.